Thank you for joining Odessa College Academic Workshop. What credit card companies don't want college students to know? Credit card companies use marketing material and promotions such as t-shirts, gift cards, free gifts to lure students into applying and opening credit cards. The companies understand students have little knowledge or no knowledge of how a credit card works. Its interest rates, payments, or late fees the company also understands that students will have a hard time paying back if they have no knowledge of how a credit card works. They believe parents will often, if they're able, bail out the student, their child, and pay down the debt or pay it off. With the proper knowledge and financial skills, students can understand how to use a credit card, what the interest rate is, how to avoid overspending, and make sure that they don't go into debt. But credit card companies know that if students get accustomed to living on a credit card, it will be very hard to reverse or take years to repay. In this workshop, our goal is to teach you how to avoid taking on credit card debt, how to avoid overspending, what interest rates are, why paying your bills on time will increase your credit score, how less debt equals more savings. Here at Odessa College, we know you deserve to live without the burden of high interest rates and credit card debt. Credit cards are great for many reasons. You can make purchases without carrying a lot of cash around. If you're faced with emergencies, you can fix it right away, such as car repairs, medical bills. You need services or goods right away. It builds your credit to assist you with credit worthiness. The more responsible you are, the higher your credit score will go and it shows good credit payment history. A credit card is a line of credit issued by a bank and can be used for purchases on services and goods, but it requires you to pay back that loan amount in the future. When using the credit card, you will need to make at least the minimum payment every month by the due date, and the credit card will let you know when that due date is. You would have to make a payment every month until that balance, that amount is paid off. A debit card works different. A debit card is attached to your checking account and the funds come out right away in real time. It's always best to use a debit card if you have that money available. But if you have to use a credit card, it's important that you know the terms, you know the late fees, your due date, your interest rate. And I would suggest you learn all of this before you start using a credit card. I would do research, I would study to see how a credit card works and speak to someone who has the knowledge of credit cards, such as your parents or a class that speaks finances, because this will help you to understand and keep your credit card in good standing where you don't have a lot of debt lingering over your head. In addition to asking yourself, do I understand what a budget is? Do I understand what a credit card is? What is the pros and cons? How a credit card works? Do I have good understanding of my finances? Because what are you going to be spending or using the credit card for? What are your expenses? These are some of the things that you would need to ask yourself. Because if you take a look at this slide here, you will see 91% of college students had one credit card by their last year of college. Now, if all the students understood how a credit card worked, it doesn't say that. But 91% of college students have one credit card by their last year of college. On average, college students have over $3,280 worth of credit card debt. The most common credit card mistakes are only paying the minimum amount and missing the payment. So 37.6% missed the payment. 44.7% only paid the minimum amount. Top three spending categories with credit cards for students are shopping online, that's 70.1%, dining, 50%, and gas, 44.4%. 64.8% of college students had some form of credit card debt. What are interest rates? Interest rates are the amount you are charged for borrowing money a percentage of the total amount of the loan you can borrow money to buy something today and pay it later. So an interest rate is the amount you pay for borrowing. So for credit cards, the interest rates are typically stated as a yearly rate. This is called an annual percentage rate, an APR. On most credit cards, you can avoid 
pay an interest rate on purchases if you pay your balance in full each month by the due date. So say you purchase something for $40. If you purchase something for $40 and you pay it off by your due date, you pay no interest. So if you get gas, you make a purchase, whatever you use that credit card for, if you pay it off by the due date, you don't have to worry about paying any interest. The goal is if you use your credit card for any amount, pay it off by the due date within the 30 days to avoid paying the interest on the purchase. If you can't pay the full amount, pay as much as you can to pay less interest. If you don't need to use your credit card, just don't use it. Never spend or use your credit card just because you have a credit card. Same as money. If you have money and you don't need to spend it, save it. Don't use it. Your credit card can be used for emergencies only if you're able to discipline yourself and not use it. But if you need to use your credit card, keep in mind you need to pay it off by the due date. And if you can't pay it off by the due date, pay as much as you can to pay less interest. This will help you and keep you from going into debt now and in the future. College students are targeted by credit card companies because they know they're next in line to make big purchases. They're on their way to living independently. College students will purchase their first car, move into their first apartment, open accounts in their names such as utility companies, cell phone providers, they start their career. But without knowledge of finances, college students could live a life of debt and paying double to triple the amount for purchases, which can carry on into their 20s, their 30s, even the rest of their life, which is not fair. It's very important to understand finances, expenses, having a budget to avoid overspending and taking on credit card debt. If you can avoid this now, you can live a better life and have a brighter future for yourself. Attending college is one of the best investments a person can make. College is definitely a huge step in the right direction for self and family. It opens doors and creates opportunities, including earning more, which increases your salary. College raises your self-esteem, gives you the knowledge needed to be successful in the field that you choose, and it strengthens your personal growth. So be very careful with what you do now to live the life you have vision for yourself. Some of the biggest mistakes that we make financially will impact our future and years to come. Healthy food can be a challenge to bring into the home if we can't afford to buy it. So know that college students are targeted for financial reasons. And the biggest reason is to take that money out of your account, out of your savings, out of your pocket to build wealth for someone else. So we have to be careful with the mistakes that we make now to live the life that we deserve to live and secure the house, the car, the bank account, the healthy lifestyle that we desire for ourselves because we do deserve it. We're working hard now so it can impact our future in a good way. So know that the mistakes that we make will have a lasting impact if they're not corrected or taken care of right away. And if we can avoid making those mistakes, it would definitely help our present and our future. So mistakes to avoid to live the life you deserve are not looking into those available grants and scholarships that's available on campus. Check with Student Life, your support and services, your scholarship um, financial aid office. See what information they have and see what available grants and scholarships is there for you to apply. If you don't apply, you don't get them. But if you apply, that's less money you have to come up with for college. Not paying credit cards on time would definitely hinder you. So make sure you pay your credit card on time. Not taking on too much debt is definitely something that we need to avoid because taking on too much debt can hinder us. It can put you in a situation where you just can't pay and that will create a bill for you that just sits over your head and it lingers and it grows. So make sure we're not taking on too much debt or overspending. If you only have $50, don't spend $75. Don't put $100, $75 on your credit card knowing that you can't pay it back. Try not to even put the 50 on there. If you have to, go ahead, but make sure you have a plan to pay it back. 
but if you don't have to spend it don't spend it save it except in credit cards with high interest rates we have to be very very careful we're looking at the terms and we know what we're signing for because if you accept a credit card with a high interest rate that's more money that you have to pay and that's money that you do not have so it's important to avoid these mistakes to live the life that you deserve and just because you're in college now does not mean that you're going to be in college forever you're on the way to live in the life that you deserve you're on the way to live in that life you have vision for yourself you're on the way to becoming that independent person who is going to open doors and continue to walk through doors that you see yourself walking through so be very careful and avoid the mistakes that we don't have to make and if we make the mistake let's correct it right away we discuss some of the pros and cons of credit cards credit cards can be used to advantage but if they're not understood or properly used they also can be used to your disadvantage so let's look at ways to reduce your credit card debt if you find that you have overspent or if you just have more credit card debt that you can afford what you're going to do is look at your budget look at your expenses and then you're going to curve your spending you're going to cut back because you're going to need that extra money to put onto your credit card to lower your credit card debt you're going to find additional income again we talked about this early on we're going to take on something on the side we're going to take on a part-time job we're going to take on something on the weekend we're going to do this so we can help pay down what we owe because it's not going to go away and we're not going to forget about it and we're not going to take our time with it because it's going to cost us more money in the long run so we're going to take care of it as fast as we can now if something comes up where it enables us from taking on something or we have to put it to the side only for a little bit because we need to make sure that we pay down the debt that we have taken on remember we signed a contract we signed an agreement whatever that paperwork came in order for you to get the credit card you signed so it's not going to go away we have to pay for it always pay on time we have to remember that if we pay on time we can avoid the late fees we can avoid extra interest and we can keep it to a minimum pay more than the minimum if we can so let's say we purchase something for a hundred dollars if we purchase something for a hundred dollars and we couldn't pay the whole hundred dollars we just pay a smaller amount whatever that credit card statement says let's just pay a little bit more not just the minimum we want to pay it off if we can but if we can't pay it off we want to pay as much as possible but if we have to pay the minimum pay a little bit more and if you have multiple credit cards which some students do let's look at a way to pay it down there's two ways that you can do that in the financial language they would say snowball or avalanche a snowball is paying the lowest balance first when you pay that lowest balance you're going to have that money to put towards another credit card once that one is paid off or you can do the avalanche approach where you're going to pay the highest balance and work your way down so you can target the smaller balance or you can target the highest interest rate and pay it that way either way you want to make sure you pay it you also want to be patient know that it's not going to happen overnight but you do have the knowledge that you need and you have the motivation to pay it off you just have to be patient know that you're not alone you're not the only one that is tackling credit card debt but you don't want the credit card debt to linger and follow you years on down the line you want to pay it off so use these ways to reduce your credit card debt if you find yourself in a situation where you have taken on too much after you understand how a credit card works its interest rates its disadvantages and its advantages you can be on your way to using your credit card as a benefit for you you can build your credit score to be excellent or have good credit and understand why having good credit can assist you in your bigger purchase while taking control of your financial future we're going to talk about why having good credit is so important the economy runs on credit of course you can make purchases with cash but some of your purchases will cost thousands of dollars so you're not going to walk around with thousands of dollars of cash and you can also write a check but if you're going to use your credit worthiness which is defined by your three-digit credit score this can be the key to your financial life 
So you want to know what your credit score is and you want to establish good credit. Because good credit can be the deal breaker that determines if you are approved for that loan or the home or whatever purchase it is that you're applying for. But bad credit can lead to a hard no or make it difficult for you to get the approval that you are requesting. So you always want to know what your score is. And over time, your score is going to increase. If you take a look at the slide, it shows you the scores from 300 to 850. So if you start at the low end, the 300, it's considered poor. And as you go up to the 850, you're going to see fair, good, very good, and exceptional, excellent credit. This is what they're going to look at. Do you have very good credit? Do you have exceptional credit? Do you have good credit? Because this is what's going to determine whether you're going to get an, an approved or not and what your interest rate is going to be. Of course, the higher your credit score is, the higher you are to that 850, the lowest interest rate is what's going to come back. Your credit report, you can take a look at your credit report and see where you're at and then look at it over time and keep an eye on what's on your credit. Once you pay for your purchases and pay things off, over time, your credit gets even better. So it's very important for you to understand why having good credit is so important and what your credit report says. Because if you see something on your credit report that should be paid or shouldn't be on there, you can dispute it. But understanding how credit works for you, understanding the disadvantages of credit, and understanding the advantages of credit it's going to help you to live the life that you deserve. And if you get to a point where you don't understand how credit works for you or you don't understand how a credit card can be a vantage for you, try to stay away from credit cards because you, you don't want to get yourself in trouble with using credit cards if you don't understand them. But once you do understand, you're going to use that credit card to your advantage. Now we are on the right path to control our spending and have a better financial future. We have a great understanding of how credit cards will work to our advantage, and we also understand how credit cards can work to our disadvantage. But going forward, we want to make sure credit cards, if they're used, they're used to our advantage. We're going to avoid the mistakes of not paying on time. We're not going to leave any money on the table. We're going to make sure we look into available grants and scholarships at our college. We're not going to take on too much debt or we're going to make sure we don't accept any credit card with high interest rates. Now that we have some knowledge of what an interest rate is, we're going to also make sure we are saving and not just spending just because whether it's spending on a credit card or spending cash, we're going to make sure we save. As a college student, it's important to know how to Understand your expenses, know what money is coming out, and if you find yourself in a situation where you are overwhelmed with too much credit card debt or any debt, take a look at it. Don't shove it away or don't think it's going to go away because it's not, but let's make a plan for it to pay it down. And the quicker we pay it down, the better we will feel and the less we will pay out. So let's make sure we take these steps going forward to have a better financial future for ourselves. Less debt, more saving. Thank you for watching this Odessa College Academic Workshop. For more information on future workshops or to request a topic for future workshops, please contact us at lrc at odessa.edu.